Welcome to the Upper Room. I'm Amy Steele, the Dean of the Upper Room Chapel. We gather today from holy spaces all over the world for a midweek moment to pray and worship with each other. We continue to celebrate Black History Month, a time amongst many, for us to acknowledge the contributions and heritage of people of African descent. And I am so excited, as you've already heard this morning, to welcome the Reverend Pamela Kellar to our chapel today. She is an organizer and director at the Fellowship for Women of Color in Ministry, a former Metro teacher and a current pastor of Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. And most of all, she's my friend and colleague. Welcome, Reverend Keller. We invite you to learn about the indigenous nations in your location those who inhabited the land before they were usurped by warring powers. As we gather here in Nashville, Tennessee today, we acknowledge the Cherokee, the Shawnee, the Uchi people, and the traditional custodians of the land on which this chapel stands. We recognize that they, <clears throat> excuse me, have occupied and cared for this land over countless generations and we celebrate their continuing contributions to the life of the world. And now, my beloved companions, I am honored to welcome as well uh, Dean of the Chapel Emeritus, the Reverend Beth Richardson, who will be sharing a word from the world today. So, as we begin our time <clears throat> of prayer and reflection, let us open our hearts and minds to the presence of the Holy One, the Great Divine. And as you inhale and exhale, breathe in the love of God and exhale your attention and your worry. Pray with me as we begin. Lord of the mountaintop, God of dazzling clothes, be with us when we come down from the height of worship to face a world that didn't see what we just saw in you. Show us what to do. When demons rage through elementary schools, let it not be said that your disciples could not cast the devil out. When violence threatens to engulf our communities, let it not be said that your disciples cowered in fear or walked on the other side of the road. When there is peril or fire or flood, let it not be said that your disciples cleared the unwanted junk from their garages and called it charity. Lord of the mountaintop, God of dazzling clothes, show us how to be, change us, transfigure us so that this world might see what we have seen and worship you. Amen. Let us pray. 
Prepare our hearts, O God, to hear your word as it comes to us in the scripture, in the music, in the words from the world. Silence in us any voice but your own, that hearing we may be guided towards your will. In your name we pray. Amen. Hear these words from Luke 9, verses 28 to 36. Now, about eight days after these sayings, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. While he was saying this, a cloud came down and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. This is the word of life. Thanks be to God.
got a child who's feeling And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Hear these words from the world. From Religion News Service by Michael Battle. How Desmond Tutu's spirituality incorporated Christian mysticism with the African notion of interdependency. Archbishop Tutu of blessed memory constantly faced the binaries of the Western world such as church or state, individual or community, denomination or church. Ubuntu became Tutu's clarion call to move beyond such binaries for the sake of a unified South Africa. Ubuntu I am because we are. In short, Ubuntu means human beings need each other in order to be human. This interdependence is just as true in the divine life of God. Tutu imagined the kind of heaven that moves beyond racial distinctions as determinative of human identity through Tutu's own experiences of learning to forgive. His imagination for reconciliation increased, allowing for a heavenly imagination in which human identity is elevated as persons find communion with others and God. When you look at someone with the eyes of love, Tutu believed, you see a reality differently from that of someone who just looks at the same person without love, with hatred, or even with indifference. One's gaze of the other without love is the opposite of Ubuntu. Such a mystical image is in the Christian understanding of how the triune God is the persona of love itself spilling out to love creation into being. This is Christian mysticism in that no one person can claim control of life. In the Bible, Jesus knew this as he continually taught his power-grabbing disciples to relinquish power and control to God. In characteristic humor, Tutu explained in one of his sermons, Jesus gave a new, a very important responsibility to Peter. He said, feed my sheep. It's almost like asking a thief to become your treasurer. In short, the definition of Ubuntu is that personhood is always interdependent. A person is a person through other persons. African Christian spirituality offers a cosmology not just for the continent of Africa, but for the whole world to participate in recovering spiritual sight for how we all relate to each other and to creation. Ubuntu, I am because we are. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie
Beloveds, let us join together in prayer for wisdom to teach us and guide us, for the leaders of the nations and all in positions of authority, specifically today for borders and war that is knocking at the door of those borders in the Ukraine for justice, peace, equity, and freedom among all peoples of the earth, for a just and merciful end to the pandemics of COVID-19, systemic racism, colonialism, war, and violent abuses around the world. For the equitable distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine, and for healthcare workers who are struggling with fatigue on this very long journey. For those suffering physically, emotionally, spiritually, and economically. For those feeling afraid, lost, and alone. For those who are mourning the death of loved ones, the death of dreams, the death of hope. And as we join our voices with all the saints and angels of God, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
there are a multitude of gifts. <laughs> And uh, we have to know which ones are ours, <laughs> Reverend Keller. What a tremendous gift you have been to us today. Thank you for sharing in song, tremendous gift. And thank you for joining us for worship today. We love meeting you here. We look forward to hearing from you about the ways we can engage each other. And in the coming weeks, we're gonna ask you to complete a survey. Stay tuned, more information is coming. Please join us here next Wednesday, same day, same time, for our Ash Wednesday service. And now, God, by Jesus' transfiguration, enlighten our path that we may dare to suffer with him in the service of humanity and so share in the everlasting glory of him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever. Amen. <laughs>